Another type of filtering is date filtering. This means including or excluding different periods of time in your data. Now, additionally, dates have a unique property known as discrete and continuous in Tableau, which alter how the data is filtered and presented. But don't worry, we'll go through this step by step. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to talk about filtering dates. So this is kind of like a carryover from the previous video, but looking specifically at dates. All right. So dates has a like interesting properties about it in that it has different components, but it's only a single field of data. So it has, you know, year, month, day. If you have time there, you have hours, minutes, seconds, quarters, months, years, and so on. So there's a variety of ways you can filter. Now with dates, we also have to consider um, discrete and continuous right and that how that performs so let's have a look i'm going to bring in the delivery fee okay and then i'm going to bring in the date and time of contact like so so we have it as a year and i'm going to switch this to a bar for now just to make it a little bit easier and let's expand this to quarters and maybe months let's have a look at months okay cool we have months here and i'm going to use that exclude filter before just to kind of clean this up and we're going to get rid of this null there we have it. Actually, no, we'll leave that out. Don't worry, you can just leave it there. So let's say I wanted to filter this and I wanted to filter out this fourth quarter, right? Just this one, this one here. I wanna keep this. So if I wanna get rid of this 2019 fourth quarter, how do I do that? Well, let's see if we can filter this fourth quarter. If I bring in the date and time of contact, right? And drop it into filters, you'll see this menu come up and the menu basically says, what in how do you want to go about filtering? So do you want to filter on years, quarters, months, days, and so on? You'll also notice this is a color blue, meaning it's a discrete uh, property. So if I look at quarters, it's not considering years or months or days. It's only looking at quarters. So if I go quarter here and go next, it's going to give me the options. Well, quarter one, two, three, four. And if I want to get rid of everything except uh, I want to get rid of four, I can untick four. But what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of every single fourth quarter. So that's going to disappear and that's going to disappear. So let's go ahead and try it. Right. So maybe not what we want, but if I was doing an analysis, which compared every first quarter over 10 years, maybe that is what I want. So it's an option. You just have to consider that whenever you're doing a discrete visualization, it looks at the individual components of the dates. Okay, so the date range we have here isn't super long. Let me just get rid of this filter. It's only, you know, for a year, but if it's like super long, let's say like 10 years or, you know, more than this, let's say three years, then you have to start considering how you're going to filter. So what if I wanted to filter then from here onwards? Okay, well, then we have to go, well, maybe a um, continuous filter is more what we're interested in. So what we do is we bring in this date and time of contact, drop it in again, and instead of using this, these blue ones, okay, we're going to start using the green ones, which is your continuous representation of data. And we're going to start with range of dates, which is the easiest. So let's go next. And you'll see the menu has changed. And let me just bring it here. And it's very simple controls. You can basically set the start of your analysis and the end. So let's go ahead and do that. If I bring this in closer to be, you know, start of 2020, let's keep going. I can go like this. Or if that's a bit cumbersome, I can just click here and pick the date. I can change the year, 2021. I can change the month, you know, whatever it is I'm interested in. Let's just say 1st of January, 2020, 2020, and 1st of January. Okay, there we have it. And I want it to finish on, let's say, October 30. So I can go in here, go back a month, go October, or October 31st and go apply right so then it's setting my kind of start and end limits what's interesting about this type of filtering is this is a discrete representation whereas this is a continuous filter so you can kind of mix and match things right and you get all sorts of very interesting behavior what i can also do is look at starting date and ending date so this is very similar to range of dates, except that instead of setting both limits, you only have to set one. So for example, let's say I go to starting date. I only want to say, show me everything from April onwards. So if I'm adding new data in, you know, day by day, it will keep bringing those data sets in as long as the start date is April. Okay, so let's try that. 
let's say I go April 2020. So April 1st, 2020. And you can see here that, you know, I have no option. Basically anything later than 2020, show me in the visualization. Okay, there we have it. And then ending date is kind of like the opposite. So if I go ending date, I can say, I want you to show me everything up until, you know, a certain date, anything older than, you know, anything, uh, sorry, anything younger or earlier than this date, always show it to me. Okay. That's how your starting date end date works. Don't worry about special just yet. Don't need it. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. Not that important. As a beginner, this is already super helpful. Okay. So go, okay. Now we have one more type of date filtering and it's called relative filtering. And this one's an interesting one. So let's get rid of this one and start a fresh one. Let's go clear filter. Okay, there we have it. And let's bring that in again. So I'm gonna bring it in here and I'm gonna go relative date. Now this works a little bit differently from range of dates in that it's relative to a certain point in time. So starting here with this first one, Right, I can say show me. Uh, let's do it with years. Actually, I want you to show me the last three years worth of data relative to today. Right, so it depends on how you define today. By default, it's the um, the date and time of your PC. Okay, so if your data is a little bit older, in this case, the data I set up for this was you know going up to 2020. If I say show me the last, you know three months, it's not going to show me anything because it's kind of mid year 2021 at this stage. And there's no data in that time period. So let me show you how that works. If I go months and go show me the last three months, it's empty. Okay, because the last three months was, you know, whatever it was, uh, April, May, June, in 2021. But going back to this, um, hang on, just get rid of this. So going back to this one, it only goes up to November. Okay, so what we can do instead is if I go relative date again, I can set what today is. So for example, I can say anchor relative to, and the last, the last data set here is let's say 1st of November. I can set this to 2020. We'll set this to November and let's set it for the first. So now this applies relative to this date. So if I say three months, oh, sorry, the last three months, right, it will look at, was it, uh, yeah, August, September, October, okay? So let's say last three months, apply, you know, uh, I think it's including that month. So November, September, October, I think it's last three months. Yeah, that sounds about right. Or I can say, show me the last six months. So this is really good if you're always interested in, show me the last six months every for every new month. Okay, you can go weeks, days, hours, and so on. You can say, show me the previous year or the anchor year, which is, you know, this year, or show me data for next year. So the next year component would be something like, let's say you have predictive data kind of going forward, right? Um, yes, last, next, okay. All this other stuff you don't have to worry about. This shows you kind of a preview of the date that you've chosen. So let's say I go months, show me the last six months, it gives you kind of a range, okay? And that is basically your date filterings. Have a play with it, have some practice, um, but it is relatively straightforward uh, in my opinion. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you at the next one.